Hello guys, Mukas here. What's up? So I really wanted to get into a Bastion vs Bastion fight and it only happened once for now and it didn't go well but this time there was a Venu Bastion dominating Esamir and I couldn't just let him do whatever he wanted so I pulled an anti-air reaver to see if I could impact the battle around it and it ended up as a crazy reaver session that lasted almost 20 minutes I'll showcase some highlights here I often forget that I can pull reavers in Blindside 2 I'm so in love with the infantry game with the light assault, the team play game with my outfit, that I often miss the amount of cool play styles there is. And here I had a loadout ready for the aerial anomalies. It was my standard anti-air loadout, the default nose gun, or the rotary, coyote missiles, stealth, dogfighting airframe, and fire suppression. I know that many pilots don't like the dogfighting airframe, but I got used to it over the years. It makes you able to turn your nose, pitch up and pitch down much faster than if you had other airframes like the racer airframe or the hover airframe. I like that this airframe makes your aircraft very maneuverable, very agile. You can turn 180 degrees pretty fast and then boost to escape to lose an opponent. The Vortec Rotary is very good at close range fighting against other aircrafts. If you have good accuracy, you can one clip them, but you need to be very good with an arm point accuracy, which is not my case. So in the secondary, I have the Coyote missiles that launch in burst of six missiles that auto lock to enemy aircraft. And you're gonna see later that you can also use it against ground vehicles. I later get a mag rider and a harasser with it. So this session was a ton of fun, chasing aircraft, like if you were X-Wing, chasing TIE fighters. <coughs> I love the sound effects. So here we didn't have a bastion, but I had a lot of friendly anti-air. So I used this to my advantage to fall back and retreat where it's deadly for the enemy sites. Because here I got chased very often by players trying to take me down. For a lot of the sites, it doesn't cost them anything because you can pull sites for free at the bastion. But for me, it wasn't free. I pulled this river with nanites. It cost 350 nanites to pull them, which is pretty expensive if you lose it immediately but if you can last enough you can replenish your nanites so here you're gonna often see sites chasing down some of our reavers into friendly territory which is a deadly mistake for them and when I catch them doing that I try to shoot the last site chasing the site that is the furthest away from the target so I don't get intercepted myself and I don't run into his fire while he's already focusing on the target It was an amazing run with many side kills and I often had to resupply here at Cyro listening post. I try to stay mobile while I do it because it's, I know it, there is enemies in the areas so you should watch out for a minor cloak heavy hiding in the shadows. So you can see that with the stealth upgrade at max rank I'm not automatically spotted by the sites when I'm close to them which enables me to get close and do massive damage with the Vortex Rotary before they can react. So the massive advantage of having two weapons, the Vortec and the Coyote missiles, is that I can almost double my DPS. I engage by shooting the full clip of Vortec Rotary, and while I reload, I change weapons and shoot with the Coyote missiles. This allows me to keep doing damage while I'm reloading. The burst of Coyote missiles is very quick, and you can switch back to your Vortec Rotary with almost half of the reload already done. That is how you keep dealing damage with this loadout. All the weapons in Planet 2 requires leading, so you have to shoot ahead of your target, which is a real challenge with the nose guns. With the Coyote missiles, you still have to lead, but when they get into a certain radius of the enemy aircraft, they'll lock onto them, so it's very easy to have high accuracy with the Coyote missiles if the aircraft isn't too far away. They also sound and look very epic, so it's a beautiful finisher weapon. Pew, 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 pew always try to support your friendly aircraft being chased you save your friendly a lot of nanites and you take down a lot of nanites for the enemy if they haven't pulled from the bastion so you often see these sites diving to take some of us down but at some point they, if they are smart enough they'll have to retreat so they go back to their bastion where they have a lot more support by the way you have a cockpit free view when you're in first person you can look to the sides up and down I bound it to my middle mouse button, but I don't use it that often. So when the enemy area has been scattered, 
I go back to supporting my troops on the ground as much as I can. I try to wait for the enemy sites to attack us and then counter attack. Since they have the numbers, the only way for me to compete is to engage them while they are under anti-air fire. It makes it much easier for me. When I'm completely outnumbered where our low health, I escape the hell out of there, try to save my Nyanites. From the three factions, the NC have the best afterburners for their ESFs. You can boost into a direction very fast, but here I'm not running the fuel tanks, so I have very little of this boost, so I try to save it for the critical situations. Bounty guy on the ground, I couldn't miss that. The anti-air nose guns make for some pretty good anti-infantry weapons if you have good accuracy or if your target isn't moving. So take advantage of the spotted targets to get some easy kills. Here again a group of sites has dived to take down our reavers, so I try to support again. The ESF chases are extremely cinematic in Plan Side 2. Each time I'm fighting sites, I'm reminded of this Independence Day scene where like the F-16s are chasing the alien crafts. So I could only take one of the sites down and damage a liberator before I have to retreat and I cannot follow them all the way to the bastion. Also the higher my altitude, the less friendly anti-air I have. So I try to stay close to the ground, close to my friendly anti-air turrets at Sairo, close to my friendly sky guards. Try to know where these friendlies are and this will give you a retreat point where you can lose the enemy sites chasing you. When I see that the site is smoking and retreating, I of course try to get the last shot on him. You only need half a magazine on him to, t to finish it. But you cannot always commit fully to this chase. For example here I started to get locked from the ground. You should pay to the antication, sometimes it's locked from the ground and sometimes you get locked from the air. And you shouldn't react the same for these two situations. When I'm locked from the ground, I try to change my location as fast as possible, losing altitude. And if you know where the lock is coming from, you can try to put an obstacle between you and the missile to avoid the damage. This is how you're gonna stay alive very long. If you ignore these lock-on indications, you're gonna get taken down very fast. I choose to have fire suppression over flares, because fire suppression is more useful in general. You can avoid the lock-on missiles in many ways, by dodging, by putting obstacles between you and them. But the added health back from fire suppression is a lifesaver in many situations against air and ground, it gives you back almost 20% health back, which is huge. Back to being anti-ground support, here by resupplying I notice that I have anti-air turrets and several anti-air maxes, so I know this is a good retreat point if I want to fall back when I'm chased. Also the enemy infantry attacking doesn't seem to have much anti-air, so I try to engage them with my nose gun, but it's very hard to hit infantry. Here I notice some enemy sites on my radar, and I start to approach them at low altitude to not get noticed and it, gives, and it gives me an opportunity to ambush this site and dish a lot of damage on him but as soon as I get shot from the ground, here it was my brothers and tanks I start escaping if there is tanks in the area, you should be very cautious when engaging the ground because you can get one shot at FLY SWATER tanks love to do this so I quickly escape the area and come back to get this opportunistic harasser kill Right after I can engage the enemy site without him being able to see me coming. I actually have pretty bad accuracy and the situation turns where I'm losing a lot of health. This is where my fire suppression is gonna save me. Hopefully in this situation I knew that I had friendly anti-air so I just had to keep this enemy site around for him to take damage and I knew I'll be saved. I go for ultra fast crash landing to repair and as soon as I'm back in the green I escape even further away. A smoking river is gonna attract a lot of uh, stealthy vehicles or sometimes infantry. For example a stealthy flash with an anti-vehicle weapon could have finished me quickly here. So I escape even further away where there is no chance that I get ambushed while repair. The crazy mobility of this aircraft also allow you to catch enemy harassers in enemy territory and counter harass them from the air, which oftentimes they cannot do much against. So I just have to say that I love this game, 
there is hundreds of ways to, to have fun and even after 5000 hours I haven't mastered them all here I pulled just to see if I could make an impact against the Bastion and I ended up in an anti-everything session I got some side kills, liberator kills, magrider kills, infantry kills, harasser kills I had so much fun so I really advise you to try flying good pilots are gonna be needed with the Bastion side update and the fact that you can mostly damage them from the air they have 8 weak points on top, on the sides and on the bottom so the only way to completely take them down is with aircraft so ESFs, Liberators, Galaxies to a certain extent I'm far from being the best pilot but one of the best advice I can give you is to rebind your pitch up and pitch down to your mouse thumb buttons or any button on your mouse that is easily accessible this will allow you to make very sharp turns and take full of that advantage of the maneuverability of these aircraft so I'm using the thermal optics on my nose gun which highlights all vehicles in a pretty long range which able me to acquire target very fast just with a quick look I can see if there's enemy vehicles I can engage it doesn't highlight infantry anymore it used to do it very effectively but now to take down infantry you have to rely on spotting or have a big zoom to see them at long range here as soon as I get the warning from my engagement radar I turn from the infantry and check out this side that is attacking me I couldn't aim very well and I almost crashed on the ground so I didn't decide to escape it was the only good option since I have friendly anti-air I go for some quick repairs on the landing pad and quickly get back into the fight I don't have to repair at 100% because of the engineer synergy, I know I'll regenerate the rest of my health. As soon as I take damage though, this regeneration stops, so you have to be very cautious to not take damage while you're regenerating. Here I get some nice kills against infantry. Because of my last pass, I had a better awareness of where they'll be. Along the wall, trying to stop my friendlies attacking the base. Now it has become very hard to engage infantry on the ground without the channel optics highlighting them so you'll have to adapt try to anticipate where the enemies are or rely on Q spotting from your flanges I'm doing a second pass with much less success this is where I notice that the tanks are coming Next, if you want your ESF to last, you should fly as the engineer here's the Maggie kill Coyote for the win! This playstyle is very opportunistic, you can enter a war zone, exit the war zone extremely fast just to do some damage and then retreat to recover resupply. This is why it is extremely fun. And when you play as an engineer, you have a synergy with the aircraft. It's like having the rank 1 of nano auto repair. So if you don't take damage for more than 10 seconds, you're gonna start regenerating your HP, which is extremely practical and allow you to stay in the air. Although when I have less than half health, I try to retreat to friendly territory and repair so other aircraft don't see me as smoking which is a sign that you're weak and it attracts enemy fire for the last hit on you also there is another button in the aircraft key bindings that I use quite often it's called throttle which allows me to completely kill my momentum if I want to land or repair this allows me to do crazy fast landings, repairs and then get back in the action also to avoid enemy fire, flak and lock-ons I fly very low, this allows me to stay stealthy and not get spotted by targets far away. Remember that with the self upgrade you don't appear on the minimap when you are close to the enemies. So you can even surprise vehicles and infantry with an anti-air loadout. You are gonna see later that I could support the fight by shooting at, in at infantry on the ground thanks to my mobility. Although I don't stay over enemies for too long, I try to do one pass and then disappear, come back a bit later do another pass because people start to expect you also if you know where your enemies are you should approach on low altitude so they cannot see you coming next very important tip that I have for you is to fly in third person but shoot your enemies in first person for more accuracy in third person you have a much better awareness of what's going on around you and how close you are from the ground or other obstacles so each time you are maneuvering, escaping, approaching just do it in third person it's very easy to change and then to engage with full accuracy you change to first person next tip is to have a specific loadout with your engineer just for piloting where you have specific implants here I'm using ammo printer and enhanced targeting 
ammo printer allows you to resupply while in the air every 60 seconds you get a magazine of ammo and enhanced targeting allow you to see the health of the enemies and this is very effective against vehicles so you know how long you'll have to focus the targets before you can escape so all the ESF have an engagement radar which allow them to see other aircraft on their HUD if they are below 500 meters so this is extremely important in air to air combat you should keep an eye on this HUD you'll see enemy aircraft close to you and I often have a look to see if I can engage them or if they are a danger for me again if you're stealth on your vehicle you'll not appear on the enemy engagement radar also the enemy lock on missiles take longer to lock on you when you have stealth equipped this is why I think it's an, such an important upgrade you'll get focused much less it's gonna be much easier for you to lose your enemies this liberator almost made it to safety but my double dishing damage with the Coyote missile managed to finish him off quickly. I go for a bit more ground pounding, supporting my friendlies at the battle up, where I managed to get this harasser trying to escape, again with the Coyote missiles. They don't auto lock to ground vehicles, but they still do damage. You should really watch out when engaging liberators, they can shred you in one magazine if you have the tank buster and kill you in one shot with the Dalton. So I try to not be straight in front of them at close range. Also, just from the sound of it, I heard that it wasn't a Dalton gun, it was the Zephyr, which is less effective against aircraft. So it gave me the confidence to just chase this lib until I have to retreat from anti-air. Another thing that you should know is that the vehicle aircraft sensitivity affects the speed at which you pitch up and pitch down with your mouse. This is why my vehicle aircraft sensitivity is pretty high, 070, so I can have the most movement possible when I move my mouse. It can be a bit oversensitive sometimes, so I won't say this is the best way to do it. When the Bastion came back, I wasn't really ready. A big group of sites charged towards me, and I had no anti-air on the ground. Big mistake! So I noticed that I couldn't really reach the Bastion without putting myself in huge danger just being a solo pilot here. The only thing I could do is try to intercept some of its fighters to make it easier for my team to reach the weak points. So taking down enemy Bastions is gonna require organization, you need a fleet of Reavers and you'll have to accept that you can have a lot of losses before you can take down some of these weak points. In any case it was an amazing session and I hope you learned from this gameplay. Let me know what is your favorite anti-air loadout and if you found an effective way to take down Bastions. Have a good day pilots, stay epic, bye bye. I gave birth to your whole style and fail, how do it fail?